in a world where a bunch of actors are taking a crack at directing, Russell Crowe has finally made his first film, and let's see how I thought about it. So like I said before, Russell Crowe is a great actor, and he decided to finally make his own film and star in it as well. And it is The Water Diviner. Now I'm kind of glad that this finally came to my theater because I was a little worried that it wouldn't get to my theater and it actually looked pretty interesting. And it didn't come out the week it was supposed to, but it did come out a week after it was supposed to in my theater, which, yay. So The Water Diviner is a historical fiction war drama set after World War I about this Australian father that is just going to Turkey to find his dead three sons. Because it's been four years, their dead bodies haven't been sent to Australia yet, and that's because there's just so many dead bodies to, to go through. Uh, let's face it, this, this was World War I. Trench warfare was brutal. And while he's in Turkey, he gets involved with this family and starts falling in love with a woman who falls in love with him, even though she's supposed to be marrying her dead husband's brother. But she's been putting it off for quite a while, about eight years, because she will not commit to the fact that her husband had died during the war. And at the same time, he only finds two dead bodies of his sons, while his third son is missing, and it becomes apparent that maybe the third son is actually still alive, and still somewhere in Turkey. Say what you like, it, you could call it possibly Oscar bait, because they, they love their historical fiction, and it's also war drama as well. Or more of a post-war drama, because there's only a, the only war drama you get is the flashbacks. But I gotta say, this was a really interesting film, and I enjoyed it. It also has this strange mysticism and a little bit of religious weight to it, but it's never so heavy to the point where it's really bad, like... It's not like Heaven is for Real or other religious movies. Because I wouldn't even, I, I mean, I wouldn't even consider The Water Diviner a religious movie, even though it has some religious weight, especially towards the beginning of the film. So, of course, that was never too much for me. And the weird mysticism, this ability, this strange ability that Russell Crowe has in the movie is that he can go out into this middle of the desert and he just happens to know where water is. He can dig it up and create a well. And so he uses this weird power to try to find his dead sons amongst all the other dead bodies. And it's never quite explained how he does it, why he has these abilities or whatnot. It's just sort of accepted in the movie. And I, it, it never gets to the point where it's too ridiculous. And my god, the war scenes were quite epic. It is never as visceral or as violent as maybe the first scene in Save it, Saving Private Ryan or the whole movie of Fury, but there are little glimpses and little moments of brutality and ridiculous gore and violence that gives it its R rating for sure. Let's face it, World War I was, was really brutal as well, and it has to deal with the trench warfare. I mean, all they did was run out of their trench to try to get take over another trench and just get mowed down with machine guns and gas. And kudos to the film, because it shows a part of World War I that we don't really get in other movies. Like, we're all, almost every movie about World War I is about the German and Americans and the English and all that stuff. But this one is more of the Ottoman Empire and the Turkey, and you get a little bit of the turmoil that happened after the war with that particular area. And as a history buff, I really enjoyed that, even though it's, all, it's mainly all about this fictional story about this 
Australian father trying to find his son, which gives it the historical fiction. The acting was great, and of course Russell Crowe was perfect for the type of character he was playing. There's a lot of smart and subtle moments in the film as well, and things that you have to remember in order to get the bigger picture of some of the things that happen in the end, because it's one of those movies that gives you clues and gives you everything you need to know, but then very subtly so that when a more ambiguous ending happens, you still know what happened based on the knowledge you hear beforehand. So yeah, The Water Diviner was a really good movie, and I liked it a little bit better than The Woman in Gold. At that same time, it does drag on a little bit in the middle, and I understand why, because they want to focus a little bit more on the Russell Crowe's character and this woman he starts falling in love with, but when your mission is to find these sons, and when the main focus ultimately is finding the sons, it drags on the movie a little bit, but never to a point where I felt like it was a grinding halt. It got a little slow, but it was bearable. So because of that, I'm going to give The Water Diviner three and a half stars. It was almost really, really good for me, and almost a four star, but I have to give it three and a half. And have you seen The Water Diviner? What did you think about it? Go ahead and comment. If you haven't, what is your favorite movie directed by an actor? Let's go with that one. Um, hmm. I don't know what mine would be. Would it be one of Ben Affleck's films? Maybe. I don't know. I have no idea. Anyway, if you like this review and you want to see more, go ahead, subscribe, check out my reviews for 2015. I've got plenty of them, and there's more to come. Uh, I'm going to film a lot more today, hopefully. As always, this was Bruce Gifford, and this was just my opinion.